Hey y'all, this is Anel. I have another guide for you today on Zenobia, which I predict should be a bit on the shorter side, so I'll try to go in detail about where all of my equipment can be found and why I use some equipment over others. So Zenobia is one of the highest DPS blades in the game when up against unique enemies and story bosses, and is even better if they happen to be a higher level than you or have buddies with them. All three of her battle skills are added to multipliers related to these requirements. In addition, her level 3 special also does extra damage against higher level enemies. She scales extremely well with Strength, which is what all of her damage scales from, with the exception of the same level 3 special which scales with Aether, but that doesn't matter too much. Axe Arts have a miniature Mithra passive where one art on each character has the ability to recharge on critical hit, which means if you're lucky enough you'll be able to spam arts. I have Zenobia buying into Zeke, and this is because he has a strong offensive unit that scales well with Strength and has strong Axe Arts. So for my Zeke equipment, I have these two common blades with a Strength, Axe Common Blades with a Strength mod. So, if I equip a pentagon chip on these common blades, it'll raise Zeke's strength by an additional 50. So, with um, pentagon bl chips on both of these axe mods, I'm able to reach six 861 strength with Zeke. And this number can go even higher as well, because I do not have the maximum strength mods on my two common blades. So, for arts, you 100% want to have Berserker Slash equipped, and most likely Spitting Elbow and Raging Charge. Berserker Clash is the art that has a 100% cooldown on critical hit, and Raising Charge and Spinning Elbow have high damage ratio compared to Triumphal Axe. So they're probably the best three axe arts to you and they use, and they both they all have low cooldowns, so it's not really a big deal if they don't get a crit or you miss one. So for desserts, I like to run Narsapir Jelly and Hot Ruby Steamed Bun. These are the best desserts that you can pretty much have. They both restore arts by 0.4 each second, and they have some good bonus effects. And for the accessories, I have the Avant Guard Medal, and this heals Zeke when he lands a critical hit and gives him a necessary form of self-sustenance. And then I have the high-tech eye patch. The eye patch can be dropped from the motorcycle unique monster in the world tree, and the metal can be dropped from his regular enemy buddies. I've gotten a lot of questions about why I run the eye patch over something like a loincloth, so let me explain damage really quick. From what I understand, there are about five factors that go into the damage multiplication formula. These are your strength or ether stat, damage ratio and arts and specials, critical damage, Auto attack damage from core chips, and added to multipliers. All added to multipliers such as Loincloth and Zenobia's passive abilities on her skill tree will be added together and multiplied together at the end. For some quick math, if you use a Loincloth, you would have 370% added to damage multipliers on Zenobia roughly. This would increase her total damage. If you use the high tech eye patch, you will have 310% added to multipliers, and this number will be multiplied separately by the 54% from the eye patch, which increases damage ratio of arts and specials. 310% increased by an additional 54% is much better than 370%, and therefore much more damage. The only added to multiplier that could be better than eye patch is a stacked world tree drop, which is usually just a waste of time in any practical battle scenario. So therefore, in most scenarios, the eye patch is going to do most damage. So on Zenobia herself, I have the Tachyon chip equipped. The Tachyon chip gives me an extra 25% critical hit damage to increase damage further. But this is at the cost of critical hit rate itself. For a safer option with higher critical hit rate but less damage, you can run the Moon Matter chip to raise this number up to 48%. If she didn't have crit damage as her axe passive, I would say Moon Matter is far superior, but because of the strength of crit damage as another separate multiplier, Tachyana is a superior option for pure DPS and damage. Her arts have low cooldowns, so even if Berserker Slash does not get a crit, you can still use your other two arts and will likely be back up when you're finished. So for my Ox Cores, I run Affinity Max Attack 5. This can be dropped from the level 99 unique monster Beast Hunter William, who appears at the Alethro Playhouse after you complete the side quest, Farewell Good Friend. I also use Critical Hit Up 5 to increase my critical hit rate. This can be dropped from Zeoth Surpruns and Temperentia. And for this video, I'm using Indoor Attack Up 5 since my fight will be indoors. This can be dropped from Grash Paggle and Tantel in the Dangerous Fog Weather. Outdoor Attack Up 5 can be dropped from Neelan Jagrun and Jagrun Citadel and Temperentia. These aux cores increase my damage by added to multipliers by 90% and give me additional critical hit rate. So without further ado, I'm going to show off what she can do. I chose Douglas for this fight because he summons reinforcements which can increase her damage further. With this build, you'll be dishing out plenty of damage among the highest, if not the highest in the game and healing yourself with every hit. So let's see what I can do here. Give it all you've got! Show me what you got, see? <laughs> So, non-crits are doing about 70,000 damage there. And crits do about 100,000 almost. Timing's a little off here. I'm not used to using X. 
So every crit's gonna heal you up. You say I was at 700 health there and I still healed up. Which is nice. So now that his allies are here, I'm gonna um, do even more damage to him. You saw that first hit was 200,000 damage there on that one arc. And if I used Raising Charge, it would be even more than that. Raising Charge can hit over 300,000 damage in this case. And I'm doing over 100,000 damage to him right now with the Lurking Slash. So I'm gonna end this fight now with my level 3 special. What was that, like less than a minute maybe? I guess I should go ahead and finish this dude off. We don't want him sticking around. So I don't do nearly as much damage to him because he's not a special enemy, but that's okay. He's just level 82, he goes down fast. So yeah, I'd probably just end that fight in less than a minute. I did over 100,000 damage with each hit. Um, Raising Charge can reach over 300,000 damage, and even more than that if the enemy is toppled. It's pretty ridiculous. Um, so... Zeke's Axe Arts are re really strong, like I said. And this Spinning Elbow can topple, and then you can ch chain that with Raging Charge to do extra damage to the toppled enemy if you have a person with Break in your party. He's, he's pretty good with um, Mithra on your team as well, since you'll have extra accuracy, since his accuracy is not going to be the best in this case. Only 330, which isn't bad. And Zenobia's level 3 special, despite being Aether, is still really nice. It hits multiple times. It has a bonus effect of doing extra damage. It's not a bad arc to use. If you can charge up a level 4, though, then you'll be doing a ton of damage with that, because that scales off strength, and it's um, a really powerful ability to have. And it has a high damage ratio as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this guide and enjoyed seeing what Zenobia can do. That's really about all there is to it. There's not much to show off besides just watching her kill things extremely quickly, which I'm sure I was able to do in this video. So I think that about covers it. As a last note, I would like to thank all you guys. I'm very close to hitting my goal of 1,000 subscribers. I'm less than 50 away. So I appreciate all the support that you guys have given me over the past like two weeks to help me reach that goal. And hopefully I'll be a partner by the next video. So thank you guys so much. I hope you all